So let's continue on with another example just so that you can get the hang of it on critical paths and earliest starting time and latest starting time. Remember the first thing we need to do is to put the two boxes on top of every vertex. There are three edges coming out of my starting point so I need to have three boxes over here. One for each root. So I have all my boxes ready. Now I can do forward scanning and then backward scanning. Remember that forward scanning is going from left to right. I need to write down all the options going into that vertex and then I need to look for the biggest number that occurs. Left to right is getting bigger and right to left is getting smaller. So let's get started. I'm starting here at zero. I'll start at zero. I'm going to take this route first to get to, see, now to get to this point here, there are two routes. Don't count this route as an edge coming into C because that's going out, it goes into there. This one goes into here. Just be careful that you don't get confused because all we're trying to do is to find out the routes coming into that point. So one of my options here is going to be two. That's that route coming from that edge there. I don't know this one yet because I don't know what's happening at G. So I have to find over here as well. Well, coming into there is also 2. So that's going to be 5. And I don't know what the other one's going to be. This is going to be only one route going there. That's 3. And then 3 plus 1 is 4 coming into there. So what number must go here? There's, when I have that arrow there coming into there, so I have to do this root, which is 3 plus 4 is 7, and then 7 plus 5 is 12. That's a big one. Now remember, I'm going left to right. I want the biggest number, or the biggest option, that would be 12. 12 plus 6 is 18. So my biggest option here is 18. Then I can continue. 18 plus 5 is 23. There's two roots coming in there. Have to be careful. 18 plus 4. 18 plus 4 is 22. 7 plus 10 is 17. Of course, I'm looking for the biggest root, which is 22. And then 22 plus 4 is 26. So that's 26. Okay, let's do our backward scanning now. I'm going to be going from right to left. Backward scanning, we're getting the smallest number that goes into that vertex. Remember at the finish, we start at the same as our earlier starting time, which was 26. Now we have to be careful, we're going in the opposite direction of the arrows. The opposite direction. So if you want to, you can label all of the arrows first. Make sure that all your arrows are going in the opposite direction to what they were before. I like to use a different colour because I think that when you use a different colour, it attracts your attention to it for that particular question. Have I done all of them? Well, if I've missed one out, I'll realise when I'm doing it that something's missing and then I fill it in because they're quite complicated in the sense that there's a lot of information. Let's try to do it as slowly as possible and if we forget something we will notice along the way. So we're starting at 26. 26, I need to go into this here, 
There's only going one going in the opposite direction because I've drawn my arrows. 26 take away 4 is 22. It's the only root coming into that vertex, so it's 22. If I come up here, 22 take away 10 is 12, but there are two arrows coming into there, so I have to be careful to wait to know which one is going to be the biggest number and that's going to go into the box. So let's keep going at other points until we find out what that number would be. If we come from back to the finish, 26 take away 5 is 21. But there's another one coming into here. 22 take away 4, that's 18. Remember I'm going from right to left, so I'm looking for the smallest number. That's going to be 18. Then I can come up here. 18 take away 6 is 12. Is there anything else coming in there? No. So that's got to be 12. Then I can go 12 take away 5 is 7. So I'm looking for the smallest number going right to left. So the smallest one here would be 7. Then I'm going 7 take away 4 is 3. But of course there's two arrows here. Then I've got to go 12 take away 1 is 11. So that's going to be the smallest would be 3. What else have I got to get to? 3 take away 3 would be 0. That's in A. I can put an A there, a B here, and a C here if I really want to. I've got 12 take away 5 is 7. And 18 take away 2 is 16. Just check that I've actually filled in all the boxes, which I have. And now we can look at the information that we've actually got and try to write down our critical path, write down our float times at the vertices so that we actually understand, so that when we're asked a question, we can answer it. So do we have any float times here? Well, not many. We have a float time here of seven. Actually, here there are a lot of critical paths, aren't there? Because a critical path is any route that you can take that does not have a float time. You cannot take B, the route B, because that has a float time. Don't forget that. So A, D, F, G, J. Could take that route. Many routes to take. A, D, F, G, J. And you would write them down like that. They are your critical paths. And as you can see, there's many more than one answer. Sometimes there's only one, but sometimes there's more than one. And so the person sitting next to you might get a different answer to you, and that's fine. Here is a past exam paper question from the VCAA in Victoria. And I'd just like to show it to you because I think it's a good exam question that we don't have very many of at the moment that we can have a look at. So, at the Zenith Post Office, all computer systems are to be upgraded. This project involves 10 activities A to J. The directed network below shows the activities and their completion time in hours. And that's our diagram over there. We have our start and our finish. And in between, we have all the activities. Part A says, determine the earliest starting time in hours for activity I. Part B, the minimum completion time for the project is 15 hours, write down the critical path. And part C, two of the activities have a float time of two hours, write down these two activities. So, we know how to find a critical path, we know how to find flight times, and we know how to find the earliest starting time. So, let's start by drawing our boxes. Let's do this question the same as we always do. Don't let the question confuse you. Don't let the order of the question confuse you. We do our little boxes and that's it. So, I have two options here, A and B. So remember I need to have two of them there. There's my box for A. Check 
check that you have a box on every vertex. You might want to stop the video, have a little go on your own, and if you get stuck, then at least you've got an idea of what's going on so you're not just watching me pull numbers out of the air like a magician. So we need two colours, one for forward and one for backward, earliest starting time and latest starting time. I'll use blue, light blue and green. So we're starting at zero. Let's start at the top this time. Zero, three. Now I want to make sure I've got my arrows. That goes in there. These are going out. They're going out. I think it helps to do this because I then know how many numbers I'm choosing from. It's only one. Three plus four is seven. There should be two. So now I have to find the other choice. Zero, two, two plus three is five, five plus five is ten, there's two there. Two plus six is eight. Now the earliest starting time, I'm going to the right, so I'm looking for the biggest number. Remember the big numbers are on the right, so that must be eight. Eight plus one is nine, looking for the biggest one, nine and ten is ten. Then 10 plus 3 is 13. I've only got one arrow going into there. Uh, 10 plus 4 is 14. 13 plus 2 is 15. And I'm looking for the 15. Don't forget, in part B of the question, it said to us that the minimum completion time for the project is 15 hours. So I actually know in part B that I haven't made a mistake because I got 15 out here at the end. Now I can do my backward scanning. Let's do the arrows. That one goes that way. That one goes that way. This is that way. Remember we're doing the opposite this time of whatever the arrow actually says. So if the original arrow was going up, I'm going down. I think I've done all of the all of them now. Okay, so 15 goes up here, 13, there's only one arrow there, so that's 13. 13 to here, that's 10, but there's two arrows going into that vertex. I also can come from here, 15 take away 4 is 11. Remember backward scanning right to left, so I'm going to the smaller numbers. So the smallest number here would be 10. 10 take away 5 is 5. That's the only one going in there. Five take away three is two. 10 take away one is nine. 10 take away one is nine. Nine take away four is five. Only one arrow going there. Five take away three is two. Nine take away six is three. That's gonna be a two because I'm looking for the smallest. And two take away two is zero. All right. Did you get those forward and backward scannings and all those boxes for your earliest starting time and later starting time correct? If you did, great. If not, hopefully you only got one or two of them wrong and you know now why. And then the next time you'll get it right. Let's do the questions. Determine the earliest starting time in hours for activity I. So where's activity I? Over here, EFG. I. So for activity I, the earliest starting time would be 10. Great. Don't say 15 because that's when I'm finished. That activity I takes 4 hours to finish. So the earliest starting time would be after 10 hours and then it would take me 4 hours to do it. Just be careful that you're looking at the right number. Then it says write down the critical path, part B. Well, the critical path is any path that has no float time. So remember, there might be more than one option here. So, there might, there might not be, but there might be. So I start here. I can only go to B. From B, I can't go up to C because I can't go up to that. D. I can't go along D because that has a float time up there. So I'm forced to come down here. Then I have to go up there. 
And I could go up there and down there, but I think I might just go there. Make my life easier. My critical part is start B E G I and then finish. That is my critical part. And then two of the activities have a float time of two hours. Write these two activities down. So, well, there's one that has two, and there's one that has two. So my two activities that have a float time are A and C. They have a float time of two. If you picked this one over here for F, that doesn't have a float time because of a float time of two. It's only got a float time of one. So be very careful. Well, hopefully you didn't think that was too bad. If you made a little mistake along the way, hopefully now you know what it was. Again, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to share, like and subscribe below.